Hello, welcome to The Wild Review on The Wild Reviewer, and today I'm going to review a thing. Happy New Year! Yeah. It's 2016, which means it's a new year for new adventures, new films to be coming out, new TV shows to come out, and more new bad content for me to possibly review and get very angry at. And seeing that this is a video all about the previous year that we've just lived, I think it was appropriate to review 2015 and take a look back at everything that happened this year. Unfortunately, I will not be doing that. Well, I mean, I've already done it, but that footage is gone now. Yeah, my original intent was to give 2015 an overall review. I was going to say it is a good year. 2015 was definitely a good year for me. But what I said in the video, um, I found later on thinking about it um, and looking over the footage, kind of, I could see it being very controversial. That's, that's all I could say. Um, I didn't say anything mean, uh, <laughs> for those who are wondering, because you will never see the video. Um, but I just said some things that I don't think people will agree with and... Um, because everyone's got their different opinions, and I think the one thing I should probably stay away from reviewing is stuff that's happening in the real world right now, like um, Donald Trump and uh, Caitlyn Jenner and all that stuff. Not that I mentioned any of them in the video, but uh, I've just decided maybe I stay away from all that stuff. So, instead of uh, giving a year review seeing that I've already stated that I think 2015 was a good year for me, I thought of something else to do in a replacement for that, because I definitely want to do a 2015 review video. And that is to talk about three pieces of content that I have reviewed on this show this past year. If you've noticed, at the end of every Wild review, I basically give my overall opinion on what I thought the film or the show or the thing, whatever I'm reviewing is. I give it a little rating. I either say it's good, okay, or bad. And I've had a lot of okay stuff. I've had a lot of good stuff and I've had a lot of bad stuff that I've reviewed this year. So I basically thought, why don't I just pick the best thing that I've ever reviewed, the all right thing I've reviewed, and also the really baddest and worst thing that I've ever reviewed in 2015. And that would be my 2015 video, because, yeah, I can't get, um, can't get in trouble with, yeah, with just giving my opinion on stuff. So yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Here's the best thing that I reviewed in 2015. Lab Rats, a good show. In the original video, I've talked about my absolute love for this show. I understand that it is a kid's show on Disney XD and it's just like all the other really bad Disney sitcoms out there, but honestly, it's not that bad if you just sit down and watch it. I personally think it is a really great show. I pointed out in my original review of Lab Rats that this show does stuff that other Disney shows do not dare to do, and one of them is actually attempt to kill off its main characters. and. I know it'd be more impressive if they actually did kill people off the show, but I feel that, you know, no other Disney show does this, so at least they're trying to get away with it. Because again, it is Disney. You can't have blood, you can't have deaths of any characters that are loved, you know, because then it kind of ruins the reputation of Disney being, you know, Disney. Disney is happy in musicals and fairy tales. And all good. But Labrex is trying to do the opposite of that, and though there are episodes that aren't as good, majority of the whole show together has a pretty good plot, and some of the episodes that take a dark turn and have really subtle and dark plots, they're freaking awesome. I get hyped when I see, I don't know, a villain rising from the dead, or when a villain has a secret plan, or just something that I'm not expecting but I'm hoping is also gonna happen. I kind of have the hype of a nine-year-old that would be watching this show. I'm 16. I really shouldn't be watching Lab Rats, but I, I think it's a really intense show. If you haven't watched it yet, I would highly recommend it. It's one of the best shows I've watched uh, this past year, right next to Doctor Who and Over the Garden Wall. Uh, 
So yeah, I'd, I'd give Lab Rats a try. I think there are only like three more episodes left if you want to see the show because I know the series is ending this year, which I'm pretty upset about. But they're coming out with a spinoff series, Lab Rats Elite Force, which is going to be a spinoff crossover show with Mighty Med, which is a, a different show that I have a different opinion on. So that was the best thing that I've reviewed. Now let's look at the okay thing that I've reviewed. This is a film that I had mixed feelings on. And this is the best one. This is my favorite okay film that I reviewed in 2015. Ryan and Sean's Not So Excellent Adventure. An okay movie. In my original review, I don't remember if I stated that I had a different opinion about this as a kid the first time I saw this. I saw this movie when I was about like 12 and I thought it was one of the funniest things ever. And now looking back at it, it kind of is, it definitely is funny, but there are definitely things wrong with it. That's why I didn't say it was a good film, nor did I say it was a bad film. Mostly because it's kind of hard to choose what side, seeing that it's got both elements of good and bad. As far as I know, Ryan and Sean were the first YouTubers to actually, I guess, break out of their YouTube shell and go into the media world with this movie. They've never had a show, they've never um, done anything else. I mean, Ryan Higa has been on Super Ninjas, but this is the only piece of content other than YouTube that both Ryan and Sean have done. and. It was definitely funny. That is the good part of this movie. I've seen it over a hundred times and I still laugh because Ryan and Sean are just very funny. They don't take many things seriously, which is funny, and there's really no conflict in the film, which I guess kind of weakens the film a little. It'd be more interesting if they had a conflict, but there is one part where it looks like they will be arguing and they just turn it into a joke. Some things don't need to be jokes, like I still kind of don't understand them, but most of the stuff and gags are very funny. I like how Sean keeps getting beat up by Ink. I love the little cowboy skit they do in the middle. That's pretty humorous, especially the ending. There's just a lot of funny parts that I find in this movie, but though it is funny, the story's somewhat messed up in a way. It's a good story, but the way it's put together is not very organized. For those who don't know, Ryan and Sean's Not So Excellent Adventure follows the line of a down on his luck producer that needs a new hit in 30 days, and he turns to the internet and finds Ryan and Sean and says, okay, come on down to Hollywood, we're gonna make you big stars. And it's not everything Ryan and Sean expect to be, seeing that it's very complicated and they get put in these really ridiculous and funny tasks. It's just very funny to see them go through all these different tasks and all these jokes and stuff. But at the same time, most of it does not make sense. There's one part where they just walk onto a stage and they're expected to sing and they automatically know a choreographed dance and they're being judged. Some of the stuff does not make sense, which is why I don't really see this as that good, but it is somewhat good because of the comedy. This is the little conflict that I have because I go back and forth saying, is this good or not? It was a very okay film and it is very funny. The story is a little weak, but it was pretty, it was all right. Yeah. So that was the best thing that I reviewed that I found all right. Now we get to what I reviewed this year that I find to be the worst thing I've ever reviewed. That is a very hard one. I have reviewed a lot of bad stuff this year, but none of them are really... I, I, had to, I had to sit down, literally, and think about all the stuff I reviewed that I found terrible. And I only came up with two things that automatically are really bad. But I gave one of them second place. I have a runner-up, and I have the real one. So the runner-up is... Teen Titans Go. I really wanted this to be the number one worst thing I've ever reviewed, but I feel like it's getting hated a lot. Which is not bad, I mean, the show is terrible. So I'm not giving it any credit, it's just that the other thing I absolutely hate, but this is like... It's... I don't hate this much as I hate the other thing, like... Okay, Teen Titans Go basically I don't like it. I really do not. 
Sometimes I'm caught watching it and my parents ask me why I'm watching if I hate it. And that's because it's the only thing on. They literally play this show almost 10 times a day. Let alone maybe like 20. They're having so many excuses to play a marathon. They've turned new Thursdays into new Titan Thursdays. Plus this show is not for kids. It is the opposite of a kid's show. It's in the format of a kid's show. But it's not meant for kids, it's giving all the wrong messages! Something about superhero shows is that they try to teach morals. You know, like how Power Rangers do it and Ninja Turtles, I think. I, I don't know. I never really watched Ninja Turtles. But Teen Titans Go, in this format, I would expect to teach life lessons, seeing on how that's how the episodes are formatted. But they do all the opposite things! I gave my opinion on the bathroom episode, if you remember, and it ended so weirdly. Because all the magic was lost in the bathroom, all the bathrooms decide to just leave Earth. Where are we gonna poop now? Where are we going to let out the disgusting things in our body? We can't poop outside, we can't pee outside. We get arrested. Teen Titans Go, I do not like. I hate the show, but I don't hate it as much as I hate the worst thing that I ever reviewed this year. I didn't do it. Phone challenge. The worst review ever. When I say the worst review ever, I do not mean this was a really bad review, like it was poorly made. I just, I hate this episode. That is what I'm trying to say here. I hate phone challenge. This was one of my really earliest reviews, and I cannot express my hatred for this episode the second that I watch it. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do it. It is no longer on Disney Channel. The show ended after two seasons, which is kind of a shame, because the show did have a good side to it. It was a very interesting plot. It had interesting characters, so... I'm kind of upset about that, but I never really watched the show. I saw about, like, four episodes. So, uh... I Didn't Do It starred Olivia Holt, who originally starred in Kicking It. That's why she wasn't in the fourth season of Kicking It. And the show was set up very interesting. Every episode would start off with an, uh, an, um, a scene that would make somebody want to say, I didn't do it. Hence the name of the show. And it basically follows a few hours before this event in the beginning of the episode of how this happened. It was a very interesting show, but one of their episodes I absolutely despise, and that's the episode Phone Challenge, which is where one of the friends, and because I haven't really seen the show, nor have I looked back at the review, I don't remember any of the names, so let's just give each other the title of what gender they are. One of their friends, which is a guy, ruins his phone in a fountain after getting a number from a girl. This then has his phone being put into right, and apparently all the friends form this pact that when one friend goes down, they all go down. So they all decide to stop using their phones for 72 hours until this guy's phone can work. This then has everybody flipping out because they need their phones, and it's making everybody go mad. But the reason this episode pisses me off is just because of how pathetic they all are acting. Olivia Holt's character is pretty cool, but the way that she was played in this episode is pathetic. She is making so many excuses and is whining about how she needs her phone. She does not need her phone for any of the excuses. Olivia's character involves her complaining throughout the whole episode that she needs her phone to look up the weather, see when the bus is coming, when you could actually just like look everywhere else for that knowledge. You could watch TV and look at the weather, or read the newspaper, or, you know, you could walk. You know? Walking, that's something. But no, everybody in this episode is written to act like that they need a cellular device to live their life. Which, to be completely honest, is how a lot of people in these shows now, especially for kids, are being written. Because we have these new devices that literally everyone is getting, it's being written into the plot of these shows. Which is why in most Nickelodeon shows, you're gonna see selfies, you're gonna see 
phones everywhere. You're going to see everybody on their phone. And unfortunately, it's sad to say, but there will be multiple copies of Phone Challenge in each show that keeps doing this, which is pretty pathetic. The more we get these technology devices, the more people are going to start going down. I mean, like, they won't have much knowledge. I mean, just look in this episode. Olivia Holt's character got soaking wet in a thunderstorm and didn't realize there was a thunderstorm because she didn't have her phone to tell her the weather. You can easily look the weather up on TV. They play it like every 10 minutes. You know, if you have time on a cable, and they put it in the newspaper. There is still a newspaper. Also, maybe if you had common sense, you could look up and notice, oh yeah, it's raining. Maybe I should bring an umbrella. But no, they have to be written like zombies. They don't know anything because they don't have their technology, and that is how many people are being written nowadays with all these devices in their shows, which is pretty pitiful. But yeah, Phone Challenge is an episode that I really hate. It's, it's one of the worst things that I've ever seen on this show, and it's the worst thing I've ever reviewed. So those are the three things that I talked about in this episode. That was my best, my all right, and the worst thing that I've ever reviewed in 2015. Now I want to hear from you guys. What is the best thing or the worst thing that you have seen in television or movies in 2015? What was your favorite movie or TV show in 2015? Do you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video? Tell me in the comments and also leave me your suggestions for whatever movie, TV show, or random thing you want me to talk about next. And all the links to each review that I mentioned in today's episode will be featured in the description below. Thanks for watching The Wild Review. I'm The Wild Reviewer, and you just saw me review a thing.